All right, what's going on YouTube? So today we'll be grinding a team affinity in this video. That means right now we are at 0%. By the end of this YouTube video, we will be at 100% for every single division. So we do have a timer right above my, above my head and we will start that timer as soon as we start team affinity. But let's just kind of give you guys a brief idea of what we're gonna be doing so you guys can follow along grind pause the video if you need to keep grinding and just follow along with the video if you choose to do so but the first thing we're going to be doing is our player exchanges so we pre-invested in player exchanges in 73s and 74 overalls near quick sell value so we get the most value out of the card as humanly possible yeah, we could we could get diamonds or we can get golds and it would take less cards, but it would also take more stubs to do so. We want to do it the most cost efficient way possible. And the best way to do that is to buy these cards weeks, days, you know, even two or three weeks before the team affinity releases, because that's when you'll find the best prices. Also, after roster updates, you'll find really, really good prices on these cards. And that's what we did. So when we go to player exchanges and we go to like exchange AL East players four, the big thing is you want to do at least two, three, and four because that will unlock you the first boss. Why is that important? Well, if you get your first boss, you're able to do the PXP and boss stat mission. So each player will have a different mission. 10 total bases with Cal Ripken, three home runs with Ortiz, five hits with Williams, five extra base hits with Pena, Five extra base hits with Delgado. Now, if there's a pitcher in there, the pitcher might be the easiest one to do. So you might want to pick a pitcher first if you get one of the pitchers. However, like three home runs, not too hard. Ten total bases is probably really easy. You're not guaranteed. You don't have to hit a home run, so that's going to be really easy. Um, five extra base hits could be, be a little bit more difficult, but not too hard. And then five hits isn't really that difficult either. So you're gonna do player exchanges. That's gonna give you, if you do three of them, that's gonna give you 60,000 XP. You do the boss stat mission, that's gonna give you another 12,000 XP. You're already at like 72,000 XP, but you can also start out with the moments. That's gonna give you another 15,000 XP. That's gonna bring you all the way to 87,000 XP, pretty much probably within the first 20 to 30 minutes, give or take. 20 or 30 minutes or give or take is where you could be at. Uh, after you, do, depending on how long the moments take and how long that mission takes with the boss. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the player exchanges. As soon as we do one exchange, the timer starts. So I had to get that ready. So just that way you guys kind of get a clear idea of how long it's going to take me. Now, I'm going to try not to take any breaks during this. But if we take a break, maybe we can pause the timer if we have to go to the restroom or something like that. But I'm going to try to do this without taking any breaks. I think. With this team affinity, it's going to go super fast. Yeah, there's extreme moments. Yeah, there's an extreme showdown. Yeah, there's a conquest. But those are not for everyone, especially the extreme moment and stream showdown. Those are for like higher tier players, players that struggle with those and do those moments over and over and over again. You're wasting time. You can, There's better ways to do it. You don't have to do that if you want to challenge yourself and do that. Or if you're very good at the game, you want to do that to get a head start. That's when you do that. And then conquests. It's valuable, but not too valuable. It only gives you 10,000 XP per division. So that's 60,000 total. And it's only like six games or so. But that's still, to me, it's not the best value. However, you could grind in Conquest at the same time as you're doing these general missions that we're about to go over right now. If you don't want to do them versus play versus CPU, you can do these in Conquest in three inning games. However, play versus CPU is nine inning game, so you can probably get this done a little bit faster, play versus CPU, because you're not going in and out of games a lot. But they added some total base missions with team players. And not only did they add them, it's 100 total bases. Some teams will be harder than others simply because they won't have as good as players, and they have to be season two eligible, which means you cannot use season one cards. Wild cards do not count. It has to be a season two card or it has to be a core live series card or I guess core collection cards like Babe Ruth would technically count. And it's 100 total bases for 35 
70,000 TA points. If you do the Red Sox and Yankees, that's 70,000 TA points. That's over 30% of that division complete just from getting 200 total bases, 100 with each team. And that's going to be the main route that we take after we do player exchanges, moments, and, and we do boss stat missions along the way. The general missions, the total base missions are going to be our next focus once we get the other things done, because I think that's the most efficient way possible to do this. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how long it takes, but let's get into it. All right, so we're going to go do our first player exchange. I already know I got this one already set up. So for the AL East, we're doing the 74 or 73 overall exchanges because that's the best value. A 74 quick sells for the same amount as a 71 or a 72 or a 73 does. So if you can get 74s at the quick sell value of 25 stubs, that's going to be the best value here. And that's pretty much what we did. 25 to 30 stubs is what I paid for these guys probably like three or four or five days ago. I don't know if I got enough cards for every division. As I put buy orders in, some orders might not have went through. Well, let's see if we got it. We got 299 right here. That's already, we only need 98 of them. So we're going to go ahead and exchange those. And now we've started Team Affinity. So now our timer right above is going to start. So now we did that one. We got to go back and do it again. Just keep on doing it, doing it, doing it until we get those done. So what I want to do, I'm going to finish these exchanges. You guys already know exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing 73s. 74s, I got them around quick sell value. I will see you guys when I'm done with these exchanges to see where we're at. All right, so 10 minutes in, we did all of our exchanges and we're at 32% for each division. Now, I forgot to mention before, roughly this is gonna take around 10,000 stubs per division, give or take a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the price that you're getting them for. But what you're shooting for, if I, I don't remember if I said it in the first part, but what you're shooting for is 73s and 74s as close to quick sell value as possible. And every bronze quick sells for 25 stubs. But that's why you want 74s and 73s because they have the higher exchange value and they still quick sell for the same price as a 69 or a 68 or a 67 does. But the 67, the 68, and 69, the exchange value on those cards, it's much, much lower. So when I go to exchanges and I go to exchange, I can't do it now because I already did it. So I can't show you that part. But when I go to an exchange, I can actually show you that part in, a, in one that I did not do. So we can go to like season one and I could show you there that when you exchange these, you see these 67s are only worth 300. So if you're buying these for 25 stubs, you're going to need a lot of them and it's going to cost you more. However, when you're buying 74s at that same price as those 67s that we just saw, you're getting five times more exchange value than you were on that 67. Now, 73s, it's 300 less, but it's not nearly as bad. That's why 73s are still pretty good, but you really want 74s near that 25 quick sell price to get the best value. Now, 72s, they get lower and lower. That's why I recommend 73s, 74s. Now, if you have like 70s and 71s in your binder that are duplicates or you just don't want them, you can exchange those. I just wouldn't go out of my way and buy them on the marketplace. But if you have extra from opening up packs in the previous Team Affinities and you just never sell any of your cards, by all means, get rid of some of your like other bronzes or even common players before you go out and buy cards for exchanges, but I'm just saying that if you're gonna purchase the cards, 74s and 73s are gonna be the best value every single time. So now that we did that, the next thing we're going to go tackle is going to be the moments. So we're gonna to go to each division is gonna have moments. Five easy moments, shouldn't be too hard, shouldn't be too long. I'm gonna complete all these moments. I'm not gonna show you guys the boring of gameplay of each moment i'm just going to complete all these moments come back to the video you're going to see that i have more progress in team affinity it should be a lot higher than 32 percent let's see how long it takes me to get through 30 moments for team affinity and if you guys did not know just a little bit of advice in here when you do moments back out of the to the main menu 
and go down because simply they just load a little bit faster. If you go down on the main menu, go down until you find moments, click moments there. And once that loads, you go to Team Affinity and then all your moments for every division are right here. You don't have to go to each Team Affinity and select the moments. You can just have all 30 of them right here. Just a little tip, a little bit easier to access them from the main menu versus going backing out of Team Affinity, go into a different division each time. To me, it's just easier to access the moments from the main menu, and that's how I do it. So let's go ahead, tackle these moments. I'll see you guys once we are done. All right, so officially our moments are complete. We're seeing that around an hour and a half. Moments, obviously, you could probably do this without moments and get it done even quicker, to be honest. Because some moments are just annoying. If you notice in the AL Central, it's not at 40% because there's just a moment. I just didn't feel like doing it. If it's Johnny Damon, get on base three times. Veteran difficulty should be easy, but getting on base three times in a game when you only have four bats, you hit you hit a line out or two or a couple line outs, you get unlucky and it's just, you gotta start over. And I feel like you're just wasting time if you can't do it like within a couple tries, you shouldn't do it. It should be the same treated the same way as an extreme moment. If you don't do it in the first couple tries, just skip it. It's really not necessary. But that's where we're at. 40% after doing all of the moments besides the one for the AL Central. We didn't do that. So 40% done an hour and a half after doing the moments. Moments weren't terrible. There were some pitchy moments a little bit longer there. Um, I think uh Great Manus gave us a little trouble because he just kept wanting to give up a hit. I hate pitching moments where you cannot give up a hit. And I also hate pitching moments where you have to strike out the side or hitting moments where you have to hit a home run because something, sometimes they don't throw you a good pitch to hit a home run. Sometimes you get walked and just, just unnecessary, unnecessary things happen when you play moments. So now we did player exchanges. We did the moments. So now what do you do? Well, you could do... There's two things you could do here. We have a boss pack because we got to 60,000. So we can open up that boss pack for each division and put those guys on our team. And I recommend doing that until you get the boss missions done. So we have Ripken, Ortiz, Williams, Pena, or Delgado for the AL East. And I actually want to check and show you guys. Let's see one that had a picture. I think the NL East might have had a pitcher. I don't remember. Let's go ahead and search through these so we can find out. We have Seaver, so five strikeouts. So yeah, I feel like the those are going to be really, really easy. So we had we also had another one as well. Was it the NL West that we just did that had one? We have Trevor Hoffman. So two saves. I do not recommend picking Trevor Hoffman to do saves unless you plan on playing like uh, Conquest or Mini Seasons, where it's a three-inning game, and it's a lot easier to set up a save. So Hoffman would be my last choice. I wouldn't pick a relief pitcher for the simple fact I don't want to have to get saves. If, I, if I'm going to choose a pitcher, it's going to be a starting pitcher where five strikeouts, very fast, very easy to do. And then for these other ones, instead of saves, I can do Snyder for 10 total bases, Aurelia for five hits, Finley, three home runs. That's still a little up there, but obviously not as bad. And then the PXP with the bosses as well. With the pitcher, now with Hoffman, the, the PXP, the repeatable PXP for 5,000 TA points, that will be much faster. But we're actually going to go, and I'm going to go get those guys. So let's just go get them, and I'll show you guys who I'm going to choose based off of what I'm going to do. And the easy way to see this is probably on the mobile app. So when you guys are picking these guys, go to the mobile app. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. So I choose the guy, the mission I want. I want the total base mission. I feel like that's the easiest. 10 total bases is easier to get than two home runs or three home runs because you don't need a home run. You just need to get on base. Your singles, doubles, triples, or home runs will count towards that. So I think the total bases or the hit missions will be the easier ones to do. So for, for example, the AL Central, Minoso's on here. However, they want three triples from him. We're not going to pick that one. Three triples, no go. Not worth it. Uh, runs with Larry Doby. Now, that one's pretty good because uh, a home run would count as a run, right? So if you just get if you get a home run, it's a run. 
If you don't get a home run, you get a base hit. Then if someone else drives them in, that's also a run. So that one's not terrible either. Uh, Johnny Damon is stolen bases. I don't really like that one either. Or we could just do hits. So we could do hits with Tony as well. But five hits or three runs. I'm going to go three runs on this one. I think it's between Tony and Larry. But we're going to go ahead and go with Larry for the Central and go with runs. Now for the NL Central, it's either home runs or RBIs. It's either three home runs or five RBIs. When I thought when I start thinking of this, I really think that RBIs could be easier because they don't necessarily need to be home runs. And if you put them in a hole, you just like don't score with the other players in front of them. So if you get a hit with the first or second players, as long as it's not a home run, don't score with them. And then the next player comes to bat and they can knock them both in and get three RBIs pretty fast. So I think I'm going to go with RBIs. And with RBIs, our choices are going to be either bench or we could choose Orlando Cepeda. And I actually didn't mind Orlando Cepeda's swing, so I actually might choose him over Johnny Bench right here. I also like Ryan Sandberg, but three home runs. Eh, I'm going to choose Orlando Cepeda. He's going to be our second choice. Now, the AL East is a really simple choice. There's only one choice for me especially at least with the first boss, and it's going to be Cal Ripken Jr., 10 total bases. I told you guys I like the total base idea. I feel like it's the easiest one to do. I don't care if it's 10 total bases. Yeah, you could hit three home runs with Carlos Delgado. Uh, it could be pretty easy, but if you don't hit a home run, it basically it's a waste. So if I get any type of hits with Cal Ripken, it's a W. I'm going to take Cal Ripken, 10 total bases. Now for the NL East, this one's super easy as well. It's even the first two are actually going to be super easy. So our first boss, doesn't matter. It could be Tom Seaver or Greg Mannix on this one right here. However, let's see. Tom Seaver's got the better case per nine, so his strikeouts might be a little bit easier against the CPU. So we're going to take Tom over Greg, but both of them are five strikeouts. They're going to be very easy to do. So we'll take Tom. Once we unlock the second boss, we'll get Greg Mannix, and then his is also strikeouts, five strikeouts. So those would be the first two picks. You could go either way with your first pick, but Tom Seaver is going to be our pick there. And for the AL West, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to go ahead and take another pitcher. It will not be Raleigh Fingers because I'm going to guess that his is going to be saves. It's not. His is actually strikeout, so we could take Raleigh Fingers right here as well. But we're going to go ahead, take Roy Oswalt, but knowing that Raleigh Fingers is not saves for his mission, we'll take him the second time around. But Roy's, Roy Oswalt is going to be our first choice get those out, uh, five strikeouts out of the way. And the last choice is going to be another easy total basis choice. It ain't going to be worth, worth the best hitter. At least for me, I don't really care for his swing as much. I'd rather much rather have Steve Finley. But Finley, I believe, is his home runs. It is home runs. It's three home runs. Well, Duke Snyder is 10 total bases. I told you guys I like total bases. We're going to stick with what we like. Obviously, these packs will open up once we are done with Team Affinity. But let's go ahead and go over to our missions, add these guys to our lineup so I can show you guys exactly what we're going to be doing when it comes to grinding this out. All right, so to grind this out, we are going to be focusing on those general missions, the total base missions with one Pacific team besides our player mission guys. So the guys that we need missions done those will be the guys, the only guys in our team that are from different teams. So we'll still get getting some progress for those teams, but very minimal compared to stacking our team with one. So we're going to pretty much go in order by division. So team number one is probably going to be Red Sox. So we're going to start stacking our team with Red Sox at every other position that we can do so. And besides total bases with those teams, we also get 10,000 XP for every 10 home runs with basically that division. And we also get 10,000 XP every 25 hits. And we get 10,000 XP for every 15 strikeouts. So once we're done with like our missions with Tom Seaver and Roy Oswalt, we'll also make these guys at least a player in that division. Now, they don't have to be a player specifically from that team. They just have to be from that division. So we could go through and like select like the best pitchers 
from that division and then put them in our lineups as well as our rest of our bullpen. You probably won't use a lot of your bullpen though because there's just not that many. But like if I went Red Sox, I'd probably find somebody that I could use. If I went Yankees, I'd probably find a few people I could use. That way I could just rotate between a couple of them and not worry about the rest of them. Well, Lee Smith, we could also use. Rivera, we could also use. And those are the guys that we would focus on for this. And then we look it back and like, oh, we need RBIs with Larry Doby. So when we do our lineup, we're going to look at our lineup. We're going to make sure Larry Doby is like batting third or maybe even fourth. And then our other mission guys also just need hits. So we're going to make sure that they're batting more near the top. And then that's how we're going to basically set our lineup. So we have Cal Ripken, we have Duke Snyder, Orlando Cepeda, Larry Doby, and then the rest of our lineup is just going to be Boston Red Sox. And then we're just going to go play versus CPU, face the Colorado Rockies on rookie as the away team. So you're playing at Coors Field. You could do home team if you guys want to start out pitching and you can do like a created stadium. But we're just going to do Coors Field. And normally you would want to select your worst starting pitcher, and I probably will. I'll just start with like a Boston Red Sox, and then we'll bring in Roy Oswalt for the five strikeouts. And the reason you want to start your worst starting pitcher, it means that their worst starting pitcher will also be on the mound. So it's just going to give you a better opportunity to hit the baseball as best as possible. But anyways, I'll hop into this. Once I make some decent progress, get some of these guys done, we'll update update you guys here on youtube and where we're at the timer everything that's going on i'll see you guys once we get there all right all right so we got done we're basically done with our first game now i don't typically recommend playing out all of these play versus cpu game i'll explain why once we get to the back but basically it's because of like pxp or certain repeatable missions once you hit that mission it does not restart until you, the next game. So you have to quit out and then go back in to another game for that repeatable mission to restart. Nothing is carried over. So if I had a repeatable mission that said get uh, 10 home runs, I can get 20 home runs in a single game. It's only going to give me that XP for once. It's not going to give me the XP twice until the second game, and, and I do it on the second game. So like for PXP purposes, when it says like get a thousand PXP with AL East players, you want to get that thousand PXP and then back out of the game. That way it resets back to zero and you can get that uh, XP for Team Affinity once again. But it does not reset. It doesn't stack per game. You have to back out and go back into the next game in order for it to do it. And the only reason I really stayed in until the bottom of the six on this game is because of my pitchers. I needed five strikeout five strikeouts with two different pitchers and I didn't start them. I started the lower overall so I would face a worse pitcher. So that lower overall had at least pitched the first inning. So I couldn't bring in my second pitcher until the second inning. And then he had to pitch two innings to get those five strikeouts. And then I had to bring in another pitcher that also had to pitch two innings to get five strikeouts. So two plus two is four plus one is five. So I could have probably quit last inning, but then I was like, you know what? I want one more at bat with my hitters and that's what we did we pitched five innings we hit six innings and now we're going to quit out and see where we're at and see what progress we made for team affinity and for those missions because i already forgot i was like playing i was like i already forgot what hitters needed what which ones needed total bases which ones needed like runs i, I already forgot so here we are Gonna find out with you guys which missions that we completed. Obviously, we're gonna have some PXP stuff we got done. It looks like we did something with the AL East because we unlocked another boss for the AL East. So now we go over to progress and we can actually see our progress. We didn't hit the PXP cap, which means next game, we should not play more than probably like two or three innings. That way we can get that PXP cap. We can get that cap done and over with quickly as possible and get into the next game. Same thing with our hits with Season 2 L East players. We got 19 out of 25. That is another repeatable mission, I believe. 
So once we get that, we want to back out and start a new one. And when it comes to with the total bases with the Red Sox, I think we only had four or five Red Sox on our team. And we got 46 total bases in just five or six innings of hitting and only with five players. We got three runs with Dobie. So his mission is complete. We also got our strikeouts with Oswald. His mission is complete. Strikeouts with Seaver. His mission is complete. RBIs with Cepeda. We got three out of five. We need two more RBIs with Cepeda. And Duke Snyder got all 10 of his total bases. So we are done with him as well. Case we started. That's for season awards. We don't need to worry about that. And look, we even got total bases with Dodgers, 13 out of 100. So we made some really good progress, but our biggest progress was Snyder, uh, Seaver, Oswald, and Larry. They all actually finished theirs. We just need Cepeda to get some RBIs, and we'll be good there. As far as Team Affinity progress, obviously the AL East, 51% now, 44, 46, 46, 40, and 46. So let's go ahead and go open up the other pack and get our second AL East player. And I forgot who exactly we were going to choose from this. We'll have to double check on who we want to choose once again. And actually, since we're doing Boston Red Sox right now for total bases, I'm just going to choose David Ortiz. I think he needs three home runs. You know what? We'll, we'll knock it out. David Ortiz. We're doing Boston Red Sox total bases anyways. Welcome to the squad. You'll just take over for the other David Ortiz that we had. And that will do it. Now, because we're doing a mission with him, we want him probably leading off or near the top of the lineup so he gets more at bats. So we're gonna put them put him up there right now because the other guys are already done, but we can still get PXP, boss PXP for those guys. So I don't necessarily want to take him out of my lineup just yet. I kind of just gonna gonna kind of roll with it for now. But we got Cal Ripken. David Ortiz, Orlando Cepeda, Larry Doby. That should do it right there. We can bring in Duke Snyder down up here a little bit, and that should do it. Now, remember for this one, we don't need that much XP or PXP with the East players. So with that being said, we probably want to, we're going to definitely choose Garrett Cole again. And that way he's pitching. So he's going to count for that PXP with AL East players. And it should go fairly quickly. Maybe two or three innings, we should be done. And we only need, I think, six more hits as well to get those 25 hits. So once we get like six hits with AL East players, we'll kind of have to keep track because not all these guys are AL East besides like the bottom, like three or four plus David Ortiz and a couple others. But we have to keep track of those guys. We'll hop into this game, see where we're at. And then I will see you guys after this game, maybe the next game, and just give you guys an update of where we're at for Team Affinity with the AL East. All right, so since the last time you guys saw me, we played, I think, two, three games. I think we played two innings, and then we played five innings twice, so roughly around that that much that we got. And we got a lot done just now. As you guys see, we have two AL East Team Affinity guys, and that's because we got our 100 total bases with the Boston Red Sox. We are 90% done with the AL East. So that didn't really, I mean, timer wise, we're at like three hours, but honestly, I don't know how, when we started the actual like single missions, because remember we did the, we did the exchanges and then we did all the moments and then we started with the AL East stuff. So I don't know how, like what the timer was at when we started that. You guys probably know better than I do. We, we still need an RBI with Cepeda, but it seems like everything else we're pretty close to being done. Three home runs with Ortiz, and then seven more hits might be the dagger. And then also we need 100 more PXP. So I'm pretty sure that we are pretty much almost done, if I were to guess. If we go to Programs, Team Affinity, and we go to the ALEs, we need 20,000. Well, 20,000, seven more hits will give us 10,000. And then the PXP... We'll give us 7,500. So then we'll be like short around 2,500. So then at that point, we would probably do either the home runs or maybe we try the extreme moment. We could go that route or maybe we just pitch with a, or do, or finish David Ortiz. David Ortiz gets two home runs. We're done. 
but we can also get Williams right now and maybe get the five hits. That'd probably be the easiest one. We tried Ortiz. We still haven't got the home runs. That's why I said don't go for the home runs, guys. We should have went uh, Cal Ripken, and then we should have went Bernie Williams. The only reason I went Ortiz is because like, even if he got hits, it was counting towards the Boston total bases. So that's why we picked Ortiz to begin with. But honestly, the smarter, the smarter decision probably would have been to go with Bernie Williams, which that's probably where we're going to go right now. We're going to go ahead and go get Bernie Williams. And we get, also get one more. So we're only missing one. So let's go ahead and go do that right now. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves Bernie Williams. And then we're going to also grab ourselves. Let's see. Doesn't really matter now. So Carlos Delgado. And I think I'm just going to add Bernie to the lineup instead of Ortiz. Well, Bernie can just replace somebody, I guess. We'll see who he's going to replace. We can replace Bernie in center field. And then he's going to bat first just so he can get those hits. And then we have Diego Ortiz. Orlando Zapata still going for those uh, RBI, so he'll stay in the three hole. Hopefully he can get one more home run get that RBI and we'll be done with them. And then we're also seven hits away. So once we finish the seven hits, we'll start over as well. So let's go ahead and just go get that done real quick. And then once we're done with the AL East, we'll probably update you guys once we actually finish completely with the AL East or we start moving on to different players. But mainly my main thing is here to get that PXP done and then move on to another division. And then we could just keep in Bernie Williams in there and finish the hits or David Ortiz. And that'll get us over the hump. Biggest thing here, seven hits, finish PXP. And then we're, we can actually uh, swap out a lot of our players and move on to the next division. Well, this is a fast update. Very next game, two home runs with David Ortiz. And we are done with AL East Team Affinity. So now we can basically set our lineup for the next division. And that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to go and pick the next division that we're going to be working on and grind them. So we don't need Bernie Williams. We don't need any of these guys. Any, well, Orlando Cepeda, we definitely need him. He's not in the same division, so he can stay on our team for now. But we don't need David Ortiz. We don't need Bernie Williams. Those guys are done. So we're going to be moving on to the next division, which in this case, if I were to go, is going to be, okay, White Sox, Guardians, Tigers, Royals, and Twins. All right, for this purpose, we are going to go with the Twins because I just feel like their bats are better. We got Polanco. We got Miranda. We got Buxton. We got Maurer. We got Correa. We got Royce Lewis, Max Kepler, Cole Pepper. I think this is the move. We're going to go with the Minnesota Twins. And then for pitchers, we'll see what they got. And for the pitchers, we got Jack Hagen, Scooble, Pablo Lopez, and Tristan McKenzie. And the bullpen will have Liam Hendricks, Clase, and then Taylor Rogers. So that'll be our division bullpen and then our division starting pitchers. And then... For hitters, we just got the Minnesota twin. Besides, of course, we got Larry Doby because he's still, you know, he's from the division. So that's all that really matters. He's from the division, so he can help with like the hits and stuff like that. Other than that, we don't really need him in there, but he's gonna help with like the hits and stuff. So we'll we'll leave him in there. He does not need to be leading off though. We don't have anyone else. He's already we already did his mission, so that does not matter. So he could be anywhere in the lineup that we think that we need him. And all right, just to show you guys the progress, AL East 100%. We are going to be working on the AL Central. We're at 44%, so it is the lowest one that we're at right now. So we're going to grind the AL Central. And when we take a look at the AL Central, we're grinding home runs. We need six. We need 20, well, not 20, 18 more hits, 15 more strikeouts. And then obviously we can work on, well, we could, we could be working on the Guardians total bases. We already have 21, so we could have done Guardians. However, I think the Twins just hit better. So I think Twins is the move. 100 total bases with the Twins. But we could put some Guardians if we wanted to do the Guardians. But I think we'll be fine with just doing the Twins and grinding the rest of these missions out. So let's go ahead. Go back, right back into play versus CPU. This time, we are going to be grinding for the Twins stats. 
Well, we said we want to complete the AL Central before the four hour mark, which we did. So it's roughly taken around 45 to 50 minutes to go from like 46% to 100% on each division. So I'm going to assume that this is four more hours worth. So we're going to take us roughly around eight hours. Now, however, if we didn't do the moments, I feel like we could have done this a lot quicker. I think the moments slowed us down a lot. So if I were to do this over again, I might just skip the moments and go straight in after exchanges, go straight in to grinding the missions as fast as possible. And I would just do that, to be honest. And maybe try an extreme moment for 10,000 XP, but I mean, the regular moments for only being worth 3,000 and then just them just taking a long time to get through all of them, that's going to waste some time, in my opinion, where some of this stuff, like the, what, 10 home runs, you could do a lot quicker and you get a lot more XP for it versus having to do the all those moments. So if I was going to go through it again, I'd probably skip some of those moments. Let's go ahead and open up the packs before we go on to our next team because we are already ready to go on to our next team. But we got the AL Central cards to go ahead and grab from the pack. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like we're going to have a decent amount of packs to open at the end as we already have 37 standard and 14 ball and packs and we're not even done with like four other divisions so we're definitely going to have a lot going on with those packs at the end of the video so definitely stick around for that let's go ahead and let's see what team we're going to match up next for this next round of mission all right, so we got our team, and this is going to be the Texas Rangers. So we got Wyatt Langford, Solak, Adolis, Beltre. We got it all. Uh, Pitcher-wise, we got Gilbert. We got the switch pitcher. We got Tyler Anderson. We got Roy Oswalt, but mainly it's going to be Forrest Whitley going to be starting for us, or Logan Gilbert, whoever might be in that four slot, just because we have a lot of righties. So we want to try to force the lefty out of Colorado if we can and get the lefty on the mound. That's all we got. So let's grind this division, and I'll see you guys once we got some decent progress into the, this division. I will upgrade you. I'll basically update you guys on that progress, and I'll see you guys soon. All right, this was just a quick update. So we finished the AL West. I know you didn't see any, any of the progress, but the progress is pretty quick, less like roughly around an hour or so for the AL West right there. So... We got our total bases with the Rangers. We got we did a lot of the strikeouts repeatable, the hits repeatable, and home runs repeatable. We basically we set a goal for that game. Whatever we were close to, that's the goal we set. So if we were like eight hits away from 25 hits, we we're like, okay, and eight after eight hits, we're gonna quit out, reset that. And okay, now we're only six home runs away from this. We're gonna get our six home runs, quit out, reset the home runs. And then, oh, we need three more strikeouts. Get our three strikeouts. Quit out. Reset. And that way it just resets it every single time. So you're not wasting time striking out 10 batters when you only needed three. Or getting 20 home runs when you only needed four. And stuff like that. You want it to reset as fast as possible because it's repeatable. So you, In order to reset it, you got to quit out. And then it will refresh and reset. So we did that, and that's pretty much what we've been doing. Uh, we do the boss missions. The boss missions are also repeatable. So if you have a pitcher, that makes those pretty easy, but they don't give you a lot of XP. And then obviously the boss actual mission gives you quite a bit of XP, but you can only do it once. So we got the strikeouts with Oswalt. We got the strikeouts with Fingers, and that was pretty much it. We didn't get the hits with Young or nothing. So overall, it's just really been the home runs hits and strikeouts over and over again and then once we hit the rangers total bases we're pretty much done i think when we hit this time when we hit the 100 total bases we needed five more strikeouts and we needed three more home runs and then we were done so roughly our milestone is the 100 total bases because once you hit the 100 total bases this stuff is going to happen gradually you just want to make sure that you don't are not playing the whole game because otherwise you're not going to get these repeatable enough by the time you get to the 100 total bases. So when you get the 100 total bases, you should have done your Ks, your hits, and your home runs probably twice, sometimes three times. So make sure you guys are uh, keeping track of your home runs. 10 per game is what you kind of shoot for. Like your first game, you want to hit the, that 10 home runs. 
Uh, sometimes I hit it in like one or two innings, and that's what makes it very, very valuable. 10 home runs is 40 total bases, so it gives you a head start right there. So other than that, we're moving on to the NL East now. So we got to pick an NL East team to build a lineup with. We're starting at 92,000 XP, so we don't need a lot to get our next boss, which will definitely help us when it comes to doing the rest of this stuff. All the total bases are at zero, so it doesn't matter what team we pick. So we'll probably just pick the team that has the best players on it to make it as easy as possible. Uh, strikeouts with Maddox, so we'll definitely want to use Maddox. The next boss that we get, we'll definitely pick Maddox because we already did the Seaver strikeouts. And then for general missions, we already have five strikeouts. We don't have any hits because we only did the pitching. So 10 more strikeouts. That's what I'm going to be aiming for in the very first game. Once I hit 10 strikeouts, I'm going to quit out of that game. I don't care what my home runs are at. I don't care. Well, unless I'm like one or two home runs off, I might, I might want to stay and finish those out. But 10 strikeouts will be my main goal because I'm already close to it. You know, 10 more strikeouts, I can reset it. That way I get it back to zero and I could try for the 15 strikeouts again while going for the total bases with whatever team I decide. But that's it for that one. I will see you guys once we are close or finish the NL East. That's how we're going to be tackling it, though. Repeatable missions over and over and over again as we're, as we're grinding the total bases. The four team affinities down, two more to go. We are around, around what, 66, four out of six, so like around 66% done. This one, the last few were were tough, man. And getting the home runs was a little bit tougher with this squad, but we managed to do it. We got the 100 total bases, and uh, the game right after the 100 total bases, we needed 10 strikeouts, and we needed six home runs. And man, it took us. We it literally took us longer to get the home runs than it did the strikeouts. And it normally that's not the case. Obviously, wear and tear. You know, more hours we put in, the worse our hitting is going to get. But at least our pitching still got the job done. We got the home runs. We finished another team affinity. Let's go in. We are doing the NL Central next. Let's go ahead and get into the NL Central. And I will see you guys once we're done with the NL Central. Once again, if you guys need a reminder, we are doing one of these teams right here, 100 total bases. And then we're just doing home runs, hits, and strikeouts repeatable. Once we hit a milestone, like our first milestone is probably going to be six home runs. We hit six home runs. We quit out. So it resets that back to zero because it is repeatable. And then we start that again. Well, then we'll start doing the hits after that. And then eventually the K's after that, quit out, let it reset. We'll be doing that along with any boss stat missions that we need to do. If we have another boss, once we start unlocking the bosses, we won't do the save. So the next one that we probably unlock will be Holiday. And we'll do five hits with Holiday or three home runs with Finley. That'll probably be one of the other missions that we do. Otherwise, we're just doing the total bases and then repeatable home runs, hits, and strikeouts with those division players. So I will see you guys once we are done with the NL Central. Let's get it. All right, so after our first game, we're very, very close. We're already at 65%. Uh, actually, after our second game, we have 62 out of 100 total bases. We've not been hitting very well, and when we do, it's not been a lot of home runs. Uh, we need four more home runs. We're close to the NL Central bosses uh, for PXP. So once we hit the total bases, we get the home runs, we get the NLC bosses. We can also get the hits again, I believe. Another 25 hits. And I think that's where we'll be pretty much almost done. And maybe we finish a player mission. Uh, we have not done so well with our player missions thus far, but we did unlock another player. So maybe we try a different one and try to maybe go for, for home runs. I try to go Johnny Bench just because he plays for the Reds. And unfortunately, I've not gotten any RBIs with him. So maybe he was not the pick. And maybe we should go with like Ryan Braun or Ryan Sandberg. Throw them on the bench for now and see if maybe we need to bring them in the game. And see if uh, we can get some home runs with them and just get something started with them. I think Braun needs home runs. I don't think it's anything else. But that's where we're at. We're at around 60%. And then we have one more division right after this. Hopefully, this will almost seal it. We're also going to go back to Coors Field. We tried a new field that game. We tried Costco. Just didn't feel like it played too great. I think Coors Field has played better for me. So that's where we're going to go back to. Try to get those strikeouts again. 
try to get those home runs, try to get those hits, and we'll be good to go. We are finally here. After struggling, that was still probably one of our fastest divisions that we've ever done in the NL Central. At around 49, 50 minutes, obviously we did some talking at the beginning, but I still think that's one of our fastest divisions we've done because normally we're in the near like the next hour mark when we finish. And on that one, we were not. And now we might have possibly the easiest division, at least when it comes to players because now we can use the dodgers theme team for this next one which obviously i think that's kind of a no-brainer you got the nl west you got dodgers you're probably gonna have some good power <laughs> on your side if you have the dodgers in your lineup so on this one we'll be all be focusing on hits considering we already have some hits already so 10 hits is gonna be our first goal and then obviously we're gonna be doing oh that's the wrong wrong division my bad let's uh let's rewind on that one but we got six hit out of 25 hits or four out of 10 home runs so six home runs will be our first mission hit in this one and then once we do that obviously total bases with the dodgers that helps we already have 19 so we already picked the dodger out of the boss pack so we'll go ahead and do that and which means we already completed it and then duke snyder so the next one that we're going to get and unlock will either be finley or a holiday obviously i think hits are easier so we'll probably go with Holiday and then Finley if we unlock another one and try him. But let's go ahead. Let's go make our Dodger lineup. I will see you guys once we are done with the NL West, which will mean that we will be done with Team Affinity and we'll get into all of the packs at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. We are all we are on the home stretch of chap season two, chapter three, Team Affinity. Let's go ahead. Let's finish it off and I'll see you guys soon. All right, seven hours and 45 minutes later, we are completed with season two, chapter three, Team Affinity. So as you guys see right here, Team Affinity, 100% across the board. We've gotten everything. Once again, I don't know, I struggled. I was on my last like few gallons of gas in my tank, literally. It was a struggle bus, even with the Dodgers, but it took us around around the same time, 7.45. Not too bad. We'll go ahead and pause the timer. That, that timer's like, it's like, it's not frozen. It's like delayed. It's like lagging. It's not even delayed. It's just lagging because it's been up for so long. But we got her done. We are completely done with Team Affinity. Let's go get those packs. Let's do the collection because we're done with this. So we might as well get that card. Obviously, I'm, I know I'm not the first one to complete this because I did not get on when the content first dropped. So obviously there's gonna be people that got to it much faster than me, probably like four or five hours faster than me because I was four or five hours late to the content. But other than that, I mean, I could have done this a little bit faster, I think if I didn't do moments. But other than that, we got the job done. We'll go ahead and go to special collections. We got all of the action figures, 30 of 30, easy. We got Giancarlo Stanton. We got a choice pack. We got Max Scherzer, another choice pack, draft pack, all everything you can imagine that we could get. We definitely got. I'm actually curious of who got a uh, Matt or uh, Giancarlo Stanton first. So why not just go over there and check it out? Oh, it was the Marlins. It was discovered by Irish Two. Don't know when or what time, but he discovered it. So congratulations to him for finishing Team Infinity. First, now let's go ahead and like I said, we would save all the packs. Every one of these packs is from Team Infinity. So 69 standard packs, 30 ball and packs, 12 millionaire packs, seven headliners, one guaranteed headliner, but I think that was from the conquest that I opened up, but I didn't do. And obviously five unlockables, all that stuff. And then we have the, this stuff is from the collection that we got for completing Team Infinity. So we might as well include that into the pack opening so let's go ahead let's open up these packs if i get any diamonds i will show you guys and obviously the choice choice packs i will show you guys as well otherwise you will not see anything other than the diamonds and when or if i am speaking all right ballin is a habit pack our first diamond nothing from the standard packs who's it is it going to be we get a purple but hey Diamond's a diamond. Tay hey, Oscar Hernandez, new diamond. Hey, it's a Dodger. I'll take it every day of the week. 
and we get another diamond from a ballin is a habit pack another purple i mean it is what it is we get logan and gilbert 86 overall we're going up in overalls could that be a good sign let's see if we get another diamond from the last 15. all right so we got 12 millionaire packs let's see if we get anything from these we get a regular show pack let's see what we get nothing all right our last headliner pack we do get a diamond it's gonna be a purple but it is what it is we at least get another diamond in the pack opening so i'll be happy with that we also got a bat we'll take that now this headliners pack is from the conquest so i'll open this when i do the shark conquest because that is where that is what that is part of but let's go ahead let's knock out the texas all-star game packs we got these from doing the collection for team affinity but we might as well open these and we get a nice mid round i think i'm gonna take anthony santander in that one we'll take a mid round how about home run derby no nothing no good round for us there and i think these are no sell too so that makes it oh well, they're not no sell so i guess 11k i think i think what this went, went for 11k i have to check on the next one we do we get a nfl draft pack nothing there nothing there how much do they go for like 14 8 okay i'll take that 14,800. I mean, made some stubs. Definitely did do that. Now, home stretch pack number four. And we get the rare round. Or not the, the base round, pretty much. Jet Williams. I guess Jet Williams. Yeah, I'll just keep them on the squad. Use them for collections. This stuff, the unlockables, does not matter. So that is going to end the video. So I know this is a long one. If you guys stuck around for the long one, if you grinded Team Affinity while watching this video, I appreciate you. I appreciate all the watch time. Hopefully this video does help you guys out. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you're new, turn notifications on so you don't miss out on the next video. Leave a comment down below. Any suggestions, any other videos you guys want to see from me. And I will try to do my best to get some out. We already got a Conquest map coming out with the Shark Conquest. We're going to have our Team Affinity tier list come out for the best Team Affinity cards that you could possibly use in your God Squad. And stuff like that is already in the making. So if you're asking for that, it's already coming. But I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. I need to get some rest. I'll see you guys tomorrow.